Um, my presentation is basically based on um, Sofitel and its organization, basically run by the ACO group. All right, in this um, presentation, uh, we'll be critically analyzing um, how Sofitel Hotel operates as a hotel and the different contract type it offers to um, employees. Um, it also will be looking at the learning development, performance strategy, change management, exit strategy, and how the recruitment strategy runs in Sofitel Hotel. All right, and by the way, my name is Hadi Jeef, and I'm studying international hotel management. All right, uh, the next slide here is basically my career paths. This is what I really want to uh, develop in, in the future. All right, since I'm going on a placement for one year, starting this February, I would love to um, go into receptionist and gradually go into there and develop into a graduate position where I go into reservationist. And the reason why for that swap is because reservationist is really, really easy to like develop and become like a assistant reservationist or assistant manager. That's why I decided to swap from receptionist and go to reservationist because that would be my ideal graduate position. So moving on in five years time, I would love to be an assistant manager in Hintel Hotel, preferably in Miami, which would be a lovely place to study and um, be a good manager in. Um, but that would require me a lot of training, having to start from a very low position as a receptionist and then gradually go into reservationist. I would have to work probably for like six or seven years until I get into get into that position. But I am aware of like Hilton Hotel, they have like this graduate program scheme that only takes like four years where you can actually go into and become my assistant manager. Um, in 10 years time I will change, I will swap fields and hopefully go to like something completely different which would be business travel media. And the reason why for that swap is because after working um, as an assistant manager in, in any hotel for so long I would eventually love to just travel around the world and just work and that's just pretty much it. Moving on to the next slide, uh, this is basically the contract types that Sofitel Hotels offers. Right, um, looking at it, um, they offer basically full time, casual hours, part time, temporary, permanent, internships. The most common position or contract that people actually find in Sofitel Hotel is basically full time and casual hours. The reason for that is because they have so many men staff working in the organisation that they just actually recruit for casual staff. Um, looking at their recent recruitment page, they were actually recruiting for casual staff only, which shows like how busy that hotel is as an organisation. Um, these are the only contract types um, that Sofitel Hotel offers, but I'm sure they do offer more if necessary. Um, internships, they, um, they do a lot of internship programs for graduates and students who are wishing to develop into like a bigger role and become something else bigger. And um, temporary, there isn't a much temporary position in Sofitel Hotel, um, I don't know why, but um, it seems like they need somebody to be there part-time, either full-time or casually, because that's what they're actually looking for. And the sort of hours you've been looking at for full-time would be 40 hours. Uh, casual hours, it really varies. Um, it can be either like 10 hours a day or never. And part-time is usually 20 hours a week, which is a must. And temporary position is uh, usually 15 to 20 hours. Permanent position, you're looking around 35 hours, which is a full-time position as well. Internships, they usually work for 40 hours as well. Basically, ACO is run by Sofitel's uh, recruitment strategy. Um, well, the human resources starts off by advertising the position that they're actually looking for and uh, they're recruiting online or by sending it to other agencies that, that is out there, like for example, read.com and all that and hospitality.com. And then uh, the next stage of that would be collect candidate CV on Nanosimile. ACO Group is known for selecting random candidates anonymously because of data protection and discrimination act. Uh, then moving on to the second, to the other stage would be arranged interviews. If you have find an ideal candidate, they tend to like call you like two weeks before and tell you that you haven't successfully um, selected for a job, and from there we just um, interview you. 
Then after the interview stage, they um, select the ideal candidate, and then you go to the staff training, and they will ideally put you through like on-job training induction, which tells you more about the uh, company, um, usually mention about the benefits that they will give you, and if you would love to join this company. And then after that, once you've been in, within the company for like six months or 12 months, so we usually, the manager will usually sit down with you and tell you how you're progressing, how you're getting along, and he, if he would like to keep you. Um, hotel like Sofitel normally would go through that stage where they will tell you you are ideal and perfect for the role. And um, that actually does motivate staff if you know how you're doing well in an organisation. And moving on to the next slide, which is learning and development. Um, training. Aqua Group are very serious when it comes to training um, new and current staff. For the past 40 years, Aqua Aqua Group have provided employees with one training per year. This is very important because um, staff need to be trained to the maximum where they feel like they're all professional and they and are very up to date in the system. Uh, without training, none of us would know how to function stuff, which is very important in working in a hotel because you need to be trained to the max. Moving on to induction. Induction is, is essential for employee within an organisation to attend as you are given an opportunity to find out more about the company's history, vision and benefits. All right, um, history, for example, you need to know about the company's history, otherwise then who are you working for? It is very, very important to know who you are working for and what are their main vision and goals they're trying to achieve. And also benefits, I also mentioned in induction training, you need to know what you are benefiting yourself in order to work for that company. You want to know what you would like to achieve and what will benefit you at the end of the day. Uh, development and feedback, the ACO groups have internships and graduate programmes where employees who have potential can, pro can progress in. Each employee receives a feedback every six months. All right, um, internships programs and graduates um, are given by the ACO group, which is amazing. And um, it gives you the opportunity to also progress if you have potential, if you have special talent um, that the managers will tend to like. Uh, each employee will receive um, six months um, feedback, which is also essential because our staff need to know like how they are doing well in organisation and should they be staying or leaving. Alright, moving on to the next slide. Uh, this is performance management strategy. Um, our first stage of that would be realistic organisation aims and goals. Uh, the performance management uh, team will have to know what the company is trying to achieve, which is very, very important for the management team to know. Uh, in order for the organisation to be very successful. Moving on to that, uh, reviews and staff performance. A performance management um, responsibility is to tell staff how well they are performing and make sure they're performing well to the standards. Uh, planning objectives. Um, they need to plan realistically object objectives that they can achieve in the future and also plan objectives for staff and all the other people working for the organisation. Uh, moving on, individual development, um, and again, people who have special talent, performance management um, have to um, drive them into becoming like something big, for example, like a general manager or a system manager or supervisor. So the job of a performance management um, team would have to be to tell the, like, the talented person, like, oh, well, you sh you're doing quite well in the organisation, we would love for you to go into another role, a bigger role, ideally. And moving on, uh, induction and training. Performance management also are involved in that whole process of induction and training, where they will sit down and go through the induction with you, and also training on the job, if you're new, and also if you're current staff. And then moving to achievements and rewards. Um, if you're doing well within the company, the performance management will always, always reward you and give you big achievements, like say, like for example, employee of the year or employee of the month, which is always, always important. Right, change of management. Um, the first step of that is to introduce new management to the whole company. Uh, basically, they will have a new form of discussion and introduce how the new management is about to proceed into the organisation and how it will affect others and how will how will will affect the whole organisation and for itself good or bad. 
Um, new rules and new plans. Um, when it comes to new uh, management starting the organisation, there will be new rules which staff will not be happy with, but they have to take it on board and get into that change, which will be quite effective. Uh, plans, there will set new plans for the company, which will make it even more successful, which is which is a one good thing about change management, or is a very good thing about change management, because the more uh, the better new plans, the more successful the company will be. Um, training for imp improved systems. Uh, right, when it comes to a new um, management, they will always um, change the whole system, so they will need to provide training for current staff on how to function new um, systems. I'm aware of um, Sofitel Hotel recently, like, I don't know, five years ago, they had the whole system changed and the whole management team changed. So they had to mm, train staff on how to update this system operates. For example, in the front office um, section, all that was changed, all the system on that was changed, and all the front office staff had to be trained on the new system being used. Uh, employee feedback. Um, the change management um, needs to take on board positive feedback or negative feedback from uh, employees, whether they like it. Um, employees will not always like the change, but then again, every organisation goes through a change. That's part of the change management cycle, uh, or in an organisation life cycle. I'm moving on to the next slide, which is HR policy strategy. Um, recruitment strategy. Um, that human resource um, have their own policies on that. Basically, they have to select the ideal candidate and they're not allowed to discriminate on age, um, nationality, or gender. So they have to choose the candidates quite fairly. Moving on to that, absence and sickness. Um, in any organisation, like as far as I'm concerned with hospitality, you have to give within uh, two weeks' notice or say like you had um, a fever, you would have to call the employee within 48 hours, notify him that you, you will not be uh, turning up to work and you have to give him a fairly good uh, reason for that. Um, you have to notify your manager that you've been sick or ill in an organisation. That's the policy for Sofitel Hotel. hotel. Um, Harassment and bullying. Um, managers should always be aware if there's any bullying going around. They should make sure there isn't any bullying or harassment going around in the organisation because then that would make, that would make uh, employees feel quite uncomfortable. So that should be all avoided in all necessary, because then employees may persecute you if there's any going on around. And that will always end up with the organisation being sued or have a bad reputation. Uh, moving on to payments and rewards. Um, uh, if there's any talents being spotted, the HR must always, always make sure that the managers are rewarding the staff with a, I don't know, with a voucher of 50 pounds or a glass of wine or something like that. They must always be spotted. All right, um, this is the last slide, uh, which is the exit strategy uh, based on resignation. Okay, um, before any employee is about to leave, they have to give notice to the manager and give them a valuable reason why they leave it, an excuse. And what the manager would have to do is just talk to them, discuss them, make them feel comfortable about the leaving and make sure they make the right decision. Um, and then we will have an exit interview, which I would recommend for Sofitel Hotel. Uh, they should always have like an exit interview where they talk to the employee back to leave, uh, get their reason, investigate into the situation, and try to feel and try to understand what they feel about the organisation. Uh, moving on to that, um, once they have all left, or the current employee, employee has left, you should always contact the ex-employee after like six months via Facebook, LinkedIn, or all the other necessary um, social networking sites. But the most advisable one would be LinkedIn, because then you can always get contact to them and know where they are now. And it's always good to call them as well. Um, finally, invite an ex-employee to future events, which is always important. That makes them feel welcome and may rec reconsider about coming back to the company and see how they are.